pray the Lord and we thank God for this day, for this moment. Resurrection story is the story that we are still on. Easter story is the story that we are still on. Because I want to mention again that after the resurrection, Jesus' 40 days meant a lot. And this time, I am coming to share with you two things. But before I go into the two things, remember the Lord Jesus Christ rose and like we have already heard, like we have already shared, the infallible proofs that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive because they appeared to many, 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 many witnesses who testify to the fact that Jesus is alive. And just like we have already shared in the past that Jesus appears, he is alive to give life to our lives. He appears to give peace to our peaceless lives because we agonize many times. And so, Jesus that we believe in is a living Lord Jesus Christ because he proves it like we have already read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 and other several portions of scripture. And so this resurrection story was affirmed by the heavens, was confirmed by, you know, God himself does it. I mean, there's a testimony. Because remember, in Matthew chapter 28, the Bible talks about the angel coming down and the earth shaking and trembling, and the stone was rolled. And so this is proof, heaven proving, that Jesus was alive with the angel, the earthquake, and the angel himself, the one who declared, he is risen. He is not here. Go to where he told you that he's going to meet you. And so this Jesus Christ, the one that you believe in, is the living Savior who breathes life into our lifeless bodies. This calls to mind Ezekiel chapter 37, you remember, the dry bones. Many times we get dried up. Many times we become bony and no hope at all for the next life, the next day. But his being alive is our life. And he breathes life into our lifeless bodies. So Christ's resurrection, friends, is for our salvation. Christ's resurrection is for your redemption. He calls you out. Is for your justification. Christ's resurrection is for your reconciliation. Actually, he calls, he reconciles us to the Father. And this reminds me of the seven voices you remember. But one of them, he cries and says, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And so he is ever pleading with the Father on our behalf to reconcile us with God. And so Jesus' resurrection in the 40 days, why we are insisting on it, one day, two days, or one week after another week, we are still reading about the resurrection until the ascension day, because it is the center of our belief, it is the center of our faith, is fundamental to our, to our lives. Without resurrection, I want to re-echo. Without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christianity means nothing. And Paul tells us, says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to ask you to read that long chapter. You'll see how Paul emphasizes about the resurrection body, about our resurrection, about Christ's resurrection, and read it. It's a long chapter, and it's one of those that explains the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in a little bit of more detail. And so Jesus resurrects and brings back life. Now, one thing that he does in the 40 days, one, restoration. Restorative appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ, he appears to restore humankind, to restore the desperate people back into the, into the fold of the Lord Jesus Christ, into the fold of the Lord. Now, this is what it means. Now, his resurrection means a lot because he was walking around in the 40 days walking with them, eating with them, reassuring them. And it is, the thing was to restore them. Do you remember the Mary Magdalene who was crying and he was telling them, he called them by name, restoring Mary 
to her former position that is the woman that a joyous woman he restores the three women he restores he calls them and he gives them back hope jesus resurrection is restorative read mark read matthew read john read luke those chapters chapter 16 chapter of chapter 16 of mark chapter 24 of luke chapter 28 of matthew and chapter 24 of Luke, like I've already said, and chapter 20 of John. You will discover that Jesus' mission after the resurrection was to restore people. One, Peter. Do you know what he had done? Yes, Peter had denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And now Jesus comes back and appears to them. And when you read John chapter 21, he calls him three times. Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He calls him the second time, Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Third time, chapter 21, Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was angered by what the Lord Jesus Christ, because he had, he had emphasized it three times. But remember, Peter had denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. So this conversation was a restorative conversation. And the heading says, Jesus restores Peter. And therefore, what is the message here? The message is, you may fall. Yes, fall is human, but the Lord Jesus Christ calls you back. His desire is, be restored. You might have failed in one way or another. Peter did, but he was restored. Thomas doubted, but his appearance is, was for restoring the doubting Thomas into a believing Thomas. And these two people represent all of us. The denying Peter represent us. The, the doubting Thomas represent us. And even the betrayer Judas Iscariot who had already died represent us. And so one thing that actually the Lord Jesus Christ does in the 40 days is to restore people. God is a God of another chance. God is a God. People say second chance, but I say another chance because he desires that when you have fallen, don't remain there. When you have backslidden, don't remain there. Come back. Jesus restores. He gives another chance. As he says, he who is in Christ is a new creature. The old is gone. The new has come. Second Corinthians 5.17. And so friends, that's number one. Number two is regenerating that Jesus' appearances were regenerating to, I mean, to, 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 to re, actually it is similar to the restoration, but regenerating appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember um, Saul on the road to him out, in the road to Damascus to betray, to kill, and do all sorts of things. Now Jesus' appearance, you remember he appeared to him on the road to Damascus and calls him Saul. Why are you doing this? And so this was a, re, a, re, a renewing, this, this was a, a rebirth of some sort. And the Bible says that actually Saul was transformed, was renewed, was regenerated into a new person. He becomes Paul, the evangelist that goes preaching to the Gentiles. And he writes enormously. He writes immensely. And he is one that has contributed the biggest number of books in the New Testament, 13 episodes. And so Paul, who was once Saul, was regenerated as we read in Acts chapter 9. And so Jesus' appearance brings conviction. When Jesus appears to you, he brings conviction to your heart. He brings repentance to your life. He brings firm faith in you. And so we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ appears to us so that he regenerates us so that he brings conviction in the heart. What is killing generations now is because people don't get convicted in their hearts. Repentance is not an issue. Someone does something wrong to you, doesn't feel remorse at all, doesn't feel it. The guilt in the heart. People have become, people's hearts have become so bony, so, you know, so hard, so rocky. But the Lord Jesus Christ desires that his appearance to you is a regenerating appearance to renew you, to bring you back, to change you, to transform you. Just like Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, not to be transformed, but not to be conformed, but to be transformed. And this is the resurrection power, is the power of transformation. 
Paul is transformed, Paul is changed. And so it brought conviction, it brought repentance into Paul's life and he became the preacher that is, he became the writer that is. May God change you, may God transform you, may God convict you, may God bring you to firm faith in him during this generation that is tumultuous, that this generation that is unpredictable, but he needs you be convicted and continue loving and serving him. And so the real encounter, friends, with Christ brings real repentance. In this matter, we are talking about Jesus' appearances in the 40 days. Real encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ brings about reconciliation. May you be reconciled to God and may you be reconciled to another person. Jesus' real appearance brings reconciliation. Jesus' appearance brings regeneration. Jesus' reappearance brings redemption. And these terms are very key in the Christian's life. And may Jesus' real appearance bring righteousness in your life. Bring righteousness in your life. And may Jesus' reappearances and appearances bring revival, bring renewal, bring readiness to preach. We are called upon to go and do the ministry. It was after regeneration, it was after renewal, that Jesus collects them on the mountain in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, and tells them, go into all the world and preach. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, will you go and do that ministry and the Lord Jesus Christ transforming you the power of the resurrection changing you, the power of the resurrection molding you, the power of the resurrection I mean bringing firm faith into you. And so my prayer today, my prayer this morning, my, this day, my prayer every time that actually we, we watch this is for our restoration, that's number one. Number two is for our regeneration, is for our renewal, is for our regeneration, and that we shall continue doing the work that the Lord Christ has sent us to do. He tells us, go ye into the world. Go in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do the discipleship. Do the evangelism. Do those missions and baptizing the people and bring them into the fold. Our ministry now, after restoration, after rejuvenation, after renewal, after redemption, we go out and meet people and tell them about the risen Christ and when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Newness, new strength, new power, new energy, new everything, new zeal. And I pray for you that the Lord gives you newness. And so that you get out there and continue in the ministry of the risen Lord. He is risen. And Paul in Colossians tells us actually, think about the things that are up. May God bless you and watch over you and may you continue being renewed, being revived, being rejuvenated for ministry's sake that the world will see us continue on because that's our Christ's desire until he comes back. As long as you are able, do it. May God bless you and watch over you. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.